Good morning, and God bless you on this beautiful Saturday morning. So what I'm going to do is to read to you the Sunday School lesson um, scripture for March the 24th, all right? And it is the Good Shepherd. The focus verse comes from St. John chapter 10, verse 11, which says, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. The lesson text is coming out of St. John chapter 10, verses 7 through 18. And it reads on this wise. All right. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd here um, giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I laid down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Now, just to give a little bit of dialogue on that before I go into the Sunday school lesson. One of the things that you should know is this, that if you're a part of the family of God, all right, if you're a part of the family of God, then that means that you are working on or already have a personal relationship with the Lord, okay? And you are aware of his voice. You are aware of who he is in your life, everything. There is no doubt in your mind, you know, his voice when you hear him speaking. There's no doubt. And then you will also know the false people that's talking to you. Um, when you're in prayer and all of a sudden you get distracted and you start listening to something, somebody else while you're in prayer. And this happened. All right. This happened to me. Maybe it don't happen to you. OK, I better talk about Robert. But all of a sudden you get distracted and then you're like, oh, let me get back on point. All right. Well, that's what happens to a lot of people today. They get distracted, start listening to other voices, listening to other people when God has spoken to them specifically. And they hear another voice. Now, if you know the voice of God, you know that God is not going to tell you to do anything wrong, okay? So, the Good Shepherd. If you're interested, go to my YouTube page and you will hear the rest of the story. All right, for those of you that know how um, I like to teach um, on TikTok as well as YouTube as well as Facebook. And uh, this morning I wanted to read that portion, portion of the Sunday school lesson to TikTok, okay? So this morning, we're going to continue on with the Good Shepherd. 
pray. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you once again for blessing each and every one of us. The words that you speak to us, our capability of knowing your voice. Lord God, let us hear you and obey you, Lord God, willingly. Bless us, Lord God, as we walk up right before you and help us, each and every one of us, to be witnesses for you as we go out day in, day in, and day out, as we meet new people, even as we talk to the telemarketers on the phone, Lord God. Let us always be godly in our actions. This I pray for men and women, boys and girls all over the world that a spirit of revival of repentance will sweep into the hearts of many and that many souls will be added to your church, Lord God. I pray this to happen today. In your name, Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. The truth about God is that Jesus gave his life for us. And the truth for my life, it says, I will know the good shepherd's voice and follow him alone. Our teaching outline, Jesus taught on the role of the shepherd. False versus true shepherds. I will know the shepherd's voice. Mm -hmm. You know how I kind of, yeah, I had to stop there. But as I continue on, Jesus reveals himself as the good shepherd. He lays down his life for the sheep. He knows the sheep. He speaks to the sheep. And now I will follow the shepherd alone. But the part that says, I will know the shepherd's voice, the only way you're going to know is that you have a relationship with him. Okay? Having a wonderful, loving relationship with the Lord by getting into his word, by praying. Uh, For some, fasting, you know, Uh, for some, the fellowship with other believers, going out witnessing and and or testifying about the goodness of God. Even when you've gone through a horrific trial in your life, just knowing that the Lord brought you out. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. The lesson connection. Now, y'all. Okay, my husband finds it comical when I go up and I and I say, uh, I think she, uh, go, I, I tell Alexa good morning and ask how she's doing and you know she responds back. Well, dealing with the lesson connection, listen at this. Over the past five decades, we have seen exponentially exponential growth in the ability of a machine or program to receive and interpret spoken commands known as voice recognition technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) And then it talked about how that um, in 1976, computers could only recognize, you know, maybe 1,000 words. But in 1980, all right, IBM continued to develop voice recognition technology. In 2011, Apple introduced Siri. In 2014, when Amazon introduced Alexa. And in 2016, Google debuted Google Assistant. And it says that you can talk to your device and that your device can recognize your voice and understand and respond appropriately most of the time. Mm-hmm. I had to be uh, very careful. Um, hey, Suri. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh-huh. Um, cancel. See, I had to be very careful because, um, yeah, my phone, <laughs> my phone has Siri, so I better put it over there. But anyway, it lets us know that we can speak to our telephones without even opening it up and it can respond back to us and stuff like that. Our telephones, which one time used to be this clunky thing that we had to pick up, pick up like that and hold to our ear. All right. Um, And then it began to develop to the point where it was cordless. 
And, and now, you know, we don't even have to have a phone in the house because we can take it with us as uh, something that looks like this, you know, um, whatever. The thing is, is that, um, yeah, technology, voice recognition. But then when you bring it on home to, uh, do you know the Lord's voice when he speaks to you? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. See, when we talk about the good shepherd, it, it says that the sheep hears a voice. But if it's not the voice of their shepherd, they're not going to follow him. Mm -hmm. And that should be the same for us humans. When things are going swirling around in our minds, our heart, you know, our emotions, whatever. And all of a sudden we hear, we understand a voice speaking to us. We should know whether or not it is of God and not, and that, and if it is not. We should know, we should have that capability of knowing. All right, we should know. We should just know. Because the Lord Jesus Christ will never tell us to take our lives or to harm ourselves. The Lord Jesus Christ will never tell us to harm somebody else to by defrauding, by, you know, speaking. <clears throat> yeah. By stealing from them, whatever. Excuse me. <clears throat> I believe the dust in my material is getting to me now. Okay. <clears throat> yep. Because it only happens when I'm in here. So we need to know. If the voice speaking to us is an imposter, or it is the voice of God. Mm -hmm. Just like our computers, our phones, uh, yeah, they hear our voice. But it better be um, that if they're hearing us, that they are responding to us and us alone and not somebody else, okay? Jesus taught on the role of the shepherd the false versus the true shepherds. In this lesson, uh, we know that this is Jesus Christ talking here. And he talks about being a good shepherd. He opens up chapter 10 with, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. OK, now you and I both know that uh, farmers and, and even, um, yeah, farmers who have animals as well as crop, their main concern are the 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 road, the roving around animals. Now, for uh, vegetable farmers, you know, uh, farmers who have um fruit crops and whatnot, squirrels and rabbits, you know, those kind of moles, you know, they are destroying your garden, you know. Uh, yeah, they, they get in. How they get in, they get in. But it says that, but he that entered the door is the shepherd of the sheep. And so he starts off chapter 10 talking about the good shepherd and how that the sheep will listen to his voice and they will know his voice. But then he also talks about how that the thief will come to, as, as the scripture says here, um, the thief cometh not, verse 10, but for to steal, to kill and to destroy. And we must be ever so vigilant of our souls to know ah when the thief is coming we got to know who he is who she is we got to know that they are not coming for our good all right so we got to know who's false and who's true well we know that the lord jesus christ is the messiah we know that 
because he has said it several times in scripture. You know, he said it several times. As a matter of fact, the the um the um Samaritan woman, I mean, he just flat out told you the, the one you look at, the one you're talking about, when you're talking about the Messiah that's gonna come and I'm the I am he. You know, so we got to be mindful of this. The lesson brought us to De um, Jeremiah chapter 23. Okay, when this prophet is talking about the shepherd. Okay, so let's go to Jeremiah chapter 23. All right, Jeremiah chapter 23. Now, listen to these couple of verses that I'm going to read to you. Verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit you. I will visit upon you, rather, the evil of your doing, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, whither I have driven them. And I will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. He says here in verse 4, And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking saith the Lord. Okay. Here in chapter 23, listen also to some of the topics that's going to be taught in this chapter. The, a righteous branch. Okay. All right. The profane prophets and priests. And, and I, I got to read verse nine to you. He says, mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones are shaped. I am like a drunkard man, like a man whom wine have overcome because the Lord, because of the Lord and because of the word of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing, the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up and their course is evil and their force is not right. Isn't that something? Another part, chapter says, hearken not to false prophets, all right? Verse 16 says, thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. Mm. Another topic, prophesying false dreams. Mm. Verse 24 says, can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? Wow. Mm -hmm. Verse 32 says, behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord. And do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I send them not, nor command them. Therefore, they shall not profit these people at all, saith the Lord. Mm. Another topic of chapter 23 of Jeremiah is the burden of the Lord. Isn't that something? He says here in verse 33, and when this people or the prophet or a priest shall ask of thee, saying, What is the burden of the Lord? Thou shalt then say unto them, What burden? I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. Oh, my goodness. Mm. That lesson could have, could have taught the whole thing about the good shepherd, right? But we're going to go on. Then in Ezekiel, chapter 34, we got some more information concerning about the flocks. Okay, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 34 
And verse 8 reads as this. Well, let's read verse 7. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. If you're over the people of God, then you need to definitely uh, yeah, hear the word of the Lord. He says, as I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. There saith the Lord God, behold, I am against the shepherds and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore. You ain't gonna feed yourself anymore, he said. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth that they may not be meat for them. Mm. If you're not gonna feed the people of God, then don't consider yourself as a shepherd. You know, a lot of people used to be mad at the fact that uh, when you give money to the church, the pastor was able to use some for his own, her own um, personal need. OK. Yeah. Mm. I can remember my pastor, my first pastor, um, when I was a teenager in Orangeburg, um, District Elder James Grant. Now, he traveled from, from Charleston to Orangeburg, not once, not twice, but sometimes three times a week, all day Sunday. If he was coming on Wednesday night, he came on Wednesday night. And if there was service on Friday night, he came Friday night as well. Brought his family in tow. Isn't that something? And we're not talking um, five to 30 miles. No, we're talking, you know, over 50 miles, one way. He had to buy gas, keep his car maintenance. Mm. And here there are so many people that don't even want to go five miles out of their way to go to church. Well, like, okay, you don't have to do that. There are plenty of churches within everybody's communities, you know. But when it comes to the feeding of the people and the people hearing the voice of God, that makes the difference. OK, I will know the shepherd's voice. How are you going to know the shepherd's voice? You know, you got to have a good relationship, a relationship you have to have. You have to have. A relationship. With Jesus or with God, if you want to just put it like that. Uh, just trying to write just now. This pencil ain't big enough. So I kind of squeezed it a little bit. You got to have a relationship with him. There's got to be some sort of a relationship between you and the Lord. Mm-hmm. So that you know his voice when he speaks to you. It's just not you speaking all the time. You, It's just not, yeah, it's just not you speaking all the time. I'll just, I'll just put it like that. It's not you speaking all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. When the Lord God speaks to you, he speaks to you with a voice of love. He speaks peace and mercy. And definitely forgiveness. He speaks to you, letting you know whether or not you're going in the right direction or the wrong direction. He speaks to you, letting you know that he loves you and that you should love everyone else. That if he's forgiven you, you need to forgive others as well. I mean, there's just so much that he tells us through his word as well as through the spirit to you personally. Because the Lord will work with us on a one-on-one. A one -on -one. He will. Mm -hmm. Yes, he will. Right? And so it, it, the commentary here says, let us make listening to God our priority. Instead of going around listening to everybody, everything else, learn to listen 
to God. It is necessary for us to do so. It is necessary. Okay, again, it is necessary. All right. Jesus revealed himself as the good shepherd and that fact that he lays down his life for the sheep. He gives his life. Now, as I was um, reading, uh, um, what was I reading? Okay, I was reading. Well, I'll just go ahead and just and just say it. Um, he lays down his life for the sheep. Um, now, I don't know personally about shepherds and sheep and goats and cows and all that kind of stuff. I don't know all that. And for me, you know, I just figured that if you just build a nice pen and you, you know, you you fix it up, you don't have to worry about, you know, any any anybody coming in there and, and harming them. But as I've looked at several different YouTube videos and stuff about how that, you know, I, the best made pens sometimes are still vulnerable to a predator. You know, if they're, if they're, yeah, they are hungry and they're coming because your animals are easy prey. You know, it's, it, uh, what they say is, it's like fishing out of a barrel. You, you got the fish in a barrel and, and they're hungry and you just, you, yeah, okay. Yeah. If a predator is hungry enough, he's going to come because he knows that there's an easy prey, right, that right over there. He may come with a pack, or he may come by himself. She, he, whichever one, it doesn't matter. They hungry, they coming. And they're going to find a way in there. Well, in the lesson, it was saying how that uh, the shepherd, he gives his life for his sheep. That means that he stands in between the sheep and the predator, like our um, David the king. He talked about how that he even fought a bear and a lion and, and removed the lamb, the removed the sheep out of their mouths and killed the animal because they came to take his sheep. Now, they may not have personally been David's sheep, but they were his because it was his family's property. And it was his responsibility as a representative of said family of Jesse's family to take care of the family's property, the sheep. So to him, they were his. And he was out there. He spent his time with the sheep. And that is like our pastors, our ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, our missionaries, you know, our evangelists, that they are more um, involved with the people even like an evangelist, even if it's just for a, 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 a couple of days, a week, or however long um, their ministry is to be with the people. Yes, he gets, to, they get to be with the people. There's going to be somebody that's going to want to talk to them, going to want them to pray for them, you know, et cetera. Yeah. And so we need, to have a personal relationship and learn how to know his voice when he speaks. Okay. To land down his life for the, for the sheep. It says here in St. John chapter 15, let's go there. St. John chapter 15. All right. And verse, what, what is it? Verse 13. All right, now let's go up to verse 12 because this is what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying. He says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. But this is what the Lord says, ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever, I command you. So you got to know he's talking to you. You got to be able to understand if you can't hear, um, to be able to read what he's saying. You understand? All right. That's why the Bible is printed in various languages, even in Braille, for those of us that are sight impaired. You understand? 
They have the audio books as well of the Bible so that you can listen to it. All right. But what we have to do is this, is that we have got to not only love the Lord, but serve him as well and obey his every command. All right. If the Lord Jesus Christ says that he's the good shepherd, then there are things that we have to do. When he says he knows the sheep, this is what the commentary says. There are likely things in our past we hope others never know. Things we have done or things done to us. Mm -hmm. We don't want, there are a lot of things in our past that we, some of us are ashamed of that we did, you know, and, and some of us are not ashamed of what we did. We just that was just who I was at that time. I shouldn't have been like that, but I didn't know no better. Now I know better. Mm -hmm. But it says our good shepherd already knows all about us. Ain't that something? Mm. And he does not hold these actions and choices against us when we have brought our past to him for healing or for forgiveness. See, it's when we try to hide and continue to do it with a cloak of righteousness before the people. But then, as soon as we are not around them folk, we can act the monkey otherwise. But God knows about that too. Even our thoughts, our very actions, you know, it speaks louder than words too. But our thoughts, the intent of our hearts, our wicked imaginations, glory be to God. He knows. Mm -hmm. We don't need to fear that God knows our past. Because he knows. It's when we try to hide it. <laughs> right down. I cannot hide nothing. I cannot hide nothing. From God. You know how some people um, come up to you and say, you know, well, I finally stopped doing, and, and they tell you what they say, what they finally stopped doing. And you say, that's wonderful. I'm so happy for you. God bless you. Mm -hmm. What else are you going to say? Mm -hmm. Corrie Ten Boom was a, a woman that, that said a lot of, you know, things. As a matter of fact, she has books that was written. But one of her quotes was, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to God. We don't know what the next moment is going to bring. We don't know if the next morning bring, moment is going to bring prosperity or poverty. Good health, bad health, life or death. We don't know what the next moment is going to bring. But our right now, right here, should be Lord Jesus Christ, according to your will, let it be done. But Lord, save my soul. Let me live for you, Lord. Let me honor you with my life. Let me live according to your will. That's where we should be in the present, living according to the will of God, obeying him in all things. You understand? Okay. Speaks to the shepherd, right? I wrote down, just like we talk to our pets and our other things, you know, we, we need to speak you know, to the Lord, just like the Lord speaks to us. It says here in St. John chapter um, 10, and verse three, the word of the Lord says, um, to him, the porter openeth. Okay, this is the opening of a sheepfold, right? Where various sheep are in. And the sheep hears his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. It could be hundreds of sheep in there, but and 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 ten or fifteen of them could be named Babe. Okay. But when my master calls my name Babe, I know he's talking to me. And that's who I'm gonna follow. Y'all move out the way. I hear my master call. Move now, move. I'm going. You understand? Mm -hmm. I refuse to be left behind. He called my name. Well, my name is baby. Is, is that your master's voice? No. <laughs> Move out my way. And so 
here, uh, <laughs> I wrote down that we even call our pets. We talk to our pets. You know how we y'all talk to your pets. You know, um, y'all talk to them. Yeah, I do talk to Gizmo and, and uh, Brantley and Chloe. Chloe, I, I, I do talk to them, and usually it's gone. I sit down, stop. Mm -mm, nope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, Uncle Festus, I call Brantley Uncle Festus, and Brant and Brantley no. Brantley and Chloe. Now they'll aggravate everybody else when they're eating, but when I'm eating, they don't bother me. Why? Because I established boundaries in the beginning of our relationship. When I sit down, they don't jump on me. Why? Because I established those boundaries. Well, you know, before we could get to that point, they thought that they had liberty with my lap, but I let them know this is my lap. Down, no, off. Y'all know how you talk to your car? Now, I'm going to tell you, I talk to my car, especially when I when I had a, uh, when I had paid for my car. And, you know, usually that's when it's over five years old, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I keep a car until it starts rolling over. I, when I can't get no more uh, what they call um, warranties on my car, when I can when I can no longer get a warranty on my car. That's usually when I trade it in. Mm hmm. Because if it's still running and I and I got good maintenance on it, there's no need for me to have to get a new car just because I paid for this one. No, ma'am, no, sir. Unless it's giving me problems, nickel and dime me, it's got to go. And 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 so, you know, I'm driving and I, come on, baby, now let's go. Come on, baby. We can do it. We can do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the car is an inanimate object without ears. It does not hear me, nor will it obey me, unless it is, it is a computerized car like my telephone. And can interact back with me. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. All right. It says sometimes throughout this long journey of life, we may feel far from God. But Paul pointed out he is not far from everyone. And, and he quoted, he's talking about Acts chapter 17. So let's go to Acts chapter 17, verse 27 and see what, they, what that verse is saying. He's not far from us. 17 and verse 27. Mm -hmm. Let's go up. Yeah. All right. Verse 24. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heavens and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything. Seeing he giveth life uh, to all life and breath and all things. That's just like me creating this. You know, I made this and called this my God. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah. He gives us life and breath and all things. He says, and have made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. And have determined the times before appointed and the bonds of their habitation. Verse 27, that they should seek the Lord. Amen. Seek the Lord. If happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He promised in Hebrews chapter 13 that he would never leave us nor forsake us. All right. Let's go to Hebrews 13 and get a little bit of that, that information too. Hebrews chapter 13. All right. All right, so <clears throat> let your conversations, verse 5 of Hebrews 13 says, be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. All right, that was Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. Okay, 
Now, this part about I will never leave you. Well, let's go back here and, 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 and follow it down a little bit. What happened here in Genesis 28, 15? Who are they talking about there in Genesis 28 and 15? All right. Who are they talking to? Oh, Jacob. Jacob. Uh-huh. Yeah. Where Jacob um, has this dream and he dreams about that ladder and the angels ascending and descending. This is where the Lord spoke to Jacob and said in verse 15, and behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places where thou goest. And I will bring thee again into this land for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken of thee. Now put yourself in the place of, of Jacob here. You know, Jacob the supplanter, the liar, the cheat. Okay. Him and his mother did cheat Esau out of his birthright. Now, yes, they did that. They did it. And he followed what his mama told him to do. And she told him to do the wrong thing. But yet the Lord still was going to bless Jacob because Jacob now not only does he does he have the birthright because Esau sold it to him, but he also has the blessing of the firstborn because his father gave it to him. All right. He blessed him because he was tricked. So, all right. I will follow the shepherd alone. Now, this is personal. This is personal. And only you can make that statement and live it. Okay, you hear me? Make that statement and live it. Only you can do that. All right? If you're going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, then do so. Live an honorable life before him. Okay? Do those things that are right and pleasing in his sight. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. All right? However you want to put it, this should be your statement to the Lord. That you're going to follow him and him alone. All right? Now, um, usually in a funeral procession, um, the funeral director um, solicits the help of a police officer to, you know, stop traffic and also lead the procession so that nobody will do anything foolish in front of the hearse and whatnot. But it's usually the, the last couple of stragglers in the back that usually get cut off. They usually get cut off. The light change, if the police officer is not there to continue to direct you even through the light, then you usually get cut off, you know, and uh, yeah. And and so it was talking about how that um, in a caravan, sometimes you get misled by the person in front of you, especially if you're not paying attention and that person has cut you off or cut the cut the person off in front of you. And so and then they they get off track and start going and following another person but you got to know who it is that you're following and that was just like in internalizing the message my goodness they brought back memories when they talked about Pinocchio and um, his father who made him Geppetto okay and Geppetto um, treated Pinocchio after he realized that Pinocchio had life okay after after he realized that Pinocchio had life uh, treated him like a boy, treated him like his son, and taught him things, and then sent him off to school and told him who to follow and, and whatnot. But Pinocchio got off track. He got off track. He stopped following, you know, following somebody else instead of staying in the line with the teacher. He went in the line with, with the cat and the fox, okay? And he started listening to what the cat and fox um, told him to do, and wound up, found himself in a place where he really did not want to or need it to be. Okay. I think one of them, I think they went somewhere to an island or something and they were turned into donkeys or something like that. If I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, but you know, but the thing, the, 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 the essence of the, of the lesson is that if you're told to follow this particular person, then that's who you follow. You obey um, the one that is, you know, is telling you the right way and the right things to do 
and not to. So now the ending portion. The Pinocchio problem is not being aware that the father's voice is being challenged. It is vital we become aware of the imposter voices and distracting influences in our lives. We should pray for an, an awareness and for wisdom to recognize behaviors and priorities influenced by the wrong voices. When we become aware that and recognize that we are following anything except our good shepherd, we have a loving invitation to return to him and follow him along. Isn't that beautiful? That's a beautiful set off. That's a, you know, to end the lesson. Talking about Pinocchio and Geppetto and his little journey. All right, y'all. This is your missionary, Sister Robin Brooks. Peace be unto you and God bless. And y'all, don't forget to like. All right? Don't forget to like my videos and share it if you have to. God bless.